In the dawn of the 16th century, Europe stood on the precipice of profound socio-political and religious transformation. The Catholic Church, an indomitable force in medieval life, wielded immense power, yet its foundations were increasingly questioned by those it sought to shepherd. Central to this questioning was the widespread practice of selling indulgences, a policy that purported to offer the faithful a reduction of penance for sins, which many saw as a stark deviation from spiritual piety towards ecclesiastical greed. Into this volatile mix stepped Martin Luther, a German monk and scholar, whose deep existential and theological crises led him to challenge the very core of church doctrine and practice. Luther's posting of the 95 Theses on the door of the Wittenberg Castle Church in 1517 was not just an academic objection to clerical abuses. It was a clarion call that ignited the flames of the Protestant Reformation, forever altering the religious landscape of Christendom. This essay seeks to delve into the life of Martin Luther, exploring his pivotal role in the Reformation, his groundbreaking theological insights, and the indelible features he left on Christianity and world history. Through a detailed examination of his early life, the catalyst of his revolutionary ideas, and the complex web of their consequences, both intended and unforeseen, this narrative aims to present a nuanced portrait of Luther, not merely as a reformer who confronted the status quo, but as a figure whose legacy is a testament to the enduring quest for spiritual authenticity and individual conviction in the face of institutional authority. First of all, Martin Luther, born on November 10, 1483, in Eisleben, Saxony, in the Holy Roman Empire, emerged from humble beginnings that would, paradoxically, lay the base for his future as a formidable reformer. His father, Hans Luther, was a miner who had ambitious plans for his son, steering him towards a career in law. Luther's early education at Mansfeld, Magdeburg, and Eisenach was typical of the time, grounded in the trivium and quadrivium, disciplines that honed his logical and rhetorical skills, which would prove crucial in his later theological disputations. In 1501, Luther enrolled at the University of Erfurt, one of the most esteemed universities in Germany. Here, he earned his master's degree in the shortest time permissible, a tribute to his intellectual prowess and his father's aspirations for him. However, an event in 1505 would alter the trajectory of Luther's life and subsequently the course of Christian history. Caught in a severe thunderstorm, a terrified Luther vowed to St. Anne that he would become a monk if spared. Surviving the ordeal, Luther saw this vow as divinely ordained, leading him to enter an Augustinian monastery in Erfurt. Luther's monastic life was demonstrated by an intense struggle with spiritual despair. Despite his rigorous practice of monastic disciplines, he found no peace in his quest for salvation. His studies led him to question the efficacy of the rites and practices of the Church in securing salvation, propelling him towards a greater theological inquiry. Johann von Staupitz, Luther's superior, recognizing his intellectual gifts and spiritual turmoil, directed him to the study of the Bible, which Luther undertook with zeal at the newly founded University of Wittenberg. Here, Luther immersed himself in Scripture, obtaining a bachelor's degree in biblical studies, and later, a doctorate in theology. His lectures on the Psalms, Romans, and Galatians were groundbreaking, emphasizing salvation as a gift of God's grace, received through faith, a radical departure from the Church's teachings on penance and indulgences. Luther's academic and spiritual journey was set against the backdrop of a Church in need of reform. The practice of selling indulgences, most notoriously by Johann Tetzel, was widespread, supposedly to raise funds for rebuilding St. Peter's Basilica in Rome but widely criticized for exploiting the faithful. Luther's growing disillusionment with the Church's practices culminated in his drafting of the 95 Theses, which he nailed to the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg on October 31, 1517. This act, though initially intended as an academic objection to Church practices, sparked a movement that would test the very bedrocks of the Catholic Church. Luther's early life and education, then, were not slightly a prelude but a crucible in which his theological and intellectual convictions were formed. The rigors of his monastic discipline, combined with his serious engagement with Scripture, fostered a theological perspective that would try centuries of ecclesiastical authority. His insistence on Scripture as the sole authority for faith and practice, his analysis of the Church's sale of indulgences, 
and his importance on justification by faith alone, were not sudden revelations, but the culmination of a long and arduous sojourn of faith. This adventure was featured by a relentless quest for truth, a profound compassion for the spiritual welfare of the laity, and a courageous willingness to confront established authorities for the sake of the gospel. Also, Luther's educational background, implanted in the humanist tradition of the time, equipped him with the rhetorical and critical tools necessary to articulate his theological intuitiveness and interconnect with his detractors. His writings, characterized by clarity, forcefulness, and depth, reflect a mind trained in the disciplines of logic and rhetoric, capable of dissecting complicated theological issues and presenting them in a manner accessible to a broad audience. His translation of the Bible into German was a monumental achievement that democratized access to the Scriptures, enabling ordinary believers to join with the Word of God directly, without clerical mediation. In summary, Martin Luther's early life and education provided the groundwork for his role as a reformer. They shaped his intellectual and spiritual development, equipped him with the tools to challenge the ecclesiastical status quo, and kindled a passion for truth that would ignite the Reformation. His consequence, therefore, is not hardly that of a theologian who confronted the Catholic Church, but as a visionary who sought to reclaim Christianity's heart for the sake of all believers setting the stage for a reformed understanding of faith, grace, and the authority of Scripture. Moreover, the year 1517 signified a central moment in the history of Christianity, a year when Martin Luther, driven by a deep-seated conviction and theological awareness, inadvertently set the arena for what would become the Protestant Reformation. The catalyst for this impressive shift was none other than the 95 Theses, a set of propositions testing the Catholic Church's practice of selling indulgences. This act, seemingly simple yet thoroughly crucial, was not only an academic exercise for Luther, but a public declaration of his growing concerns with the ecclesiastical abuses he witnessed. The sale of indulgences, particularly under the aegis of Johann Tetzel, had become emblematic of the Church's moral and theological decline. Tetzel's infamous slogan, As soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from Purgatory Springs, became for Luther a symbol of the corruption that had pervaded the Church, a corruption that exploited the faithful's fears and spiritual anxieties for financial gain. Luther's posting of the theses on the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg on October 31st was, in essence, a call to debate, a scholarly objection to the theological premises underpinning the sale of indulgences. However, the consequences of this act transcended Luther's original intentions. The printing press, a relatively recent invention, facilitated the rapid dissemination of Luther's theses, spreading his ideas far beyond Wittenberg and igniting a flame that would soon envelop all of Europe. The reaction was swift and varied. While many embraced Luther's call for reform, seeing in his theses a voice for their own discontent with the Church, others, including the Church hierarchy, were quick to condemn his actions as heretical. The climactic moment in Luther's conflict with the Church came with the Diet of Worms in 1521, where he was asked to recant his writings. Luther's refusal, encapsulated in his famous statement, Here I stand, I can do no other, identified a definitive break with the Catholic Church. This act of defiance was not simply a refusal to retract his theological positions, but a declaration of the supremacy of conscience guided by Scripture over ecclesiastical authority. It was a stance that would define the Reformation, accentuating the authority of the Bible over the Church's teachings and the principle of justification by faith alone as central tenets of Protestant belief. The fallout from the Diet of Worms was weighty. Luther was excommunicated and his writings were banned, but the genie could not be put back into the bottle. The ideas Luther espoused found fertile ground across Europe, resonating with a populace disappointed with the Church's opulence, corruption, and perceived spiritual bankruptcy. Princes and commoners alike were drawn to Luther's message, seeing in it not just a theological revolution, but a means to try the socio-political stranglehold of the Catholic Church. Lutheranism spread rapidly, aided by the printing press and Luther's own prolific writings, which ranged from biblical commentaries to catechisms, hymns, and polemical works. Yet the Reformation was not without its internal conflicts and unintended consequences. The Peasants' War of 1524-1525, to 1525, 
a widespread uprising across the German states driven by a mix of socio-economic grievances and inspired, in part, by Luther's call for Christian freedom, posed a decisive dispute. Luther's vehement opposition to the rebellion epitomized in his tract against the murderous, thieving hordes of peasants, revealed the intricacies and contradictions of reform. The revolutionary zeal unleashed by the Reformation was not something Luther could easily control, nor were its outcomes always aligned with his theological convictions. The effect of the 95 Theses and the events that followed is multifaceted. On one hand, Luther's actions precipitated a schism within Western Christianity, leading to the organization of Protestant denominations and forever altering the religious mural of Europe. On the other hand, the Reformation catalyzed a series of religious, political, and cultural conversions that would lay the groundwork for the modern world. The prominence on individual scripture reading democratized religious knowledge, while the question to ecclesiastical authority spurred growths in political thought highlighting the rights and responsibilities of the individual. In confronting the Catholic Church, Luther did not solely reform Christianity. He redefined the relationship between the individual and the divine, between authority and conscience, setting the scene for the modern age's ideological battles and quests for meaning. Furthermore, Martin Luther's theological innovations, entrenched deeply in his profound spiritual and intellectual campaign, catalyzed a seismic shift in the Christian theological scene. At the center of Luther's reformative theology was the doctrine of justification by faith alone, a radical change from the Catholic Church's teachings that salvation could be achieved through faith and good works, including the purchase of indulgences. Luther's assertion that salvation was a gift of God's grace, accessible through faith without the intermediation of the Church or its sacraments, tested centuries of ecclesiastical tradition and authority. This doctrine was not just an abstract theological concept, it was a clarion call to Christians to seek a direct, personal relationship with God, bypassing the hierarchical structures that had defined the medieval church. Luther's attention on sola scriptura, or scripture alone, as the ultimate authority in matters of faith and practice, further indicated his break from the Catholic tradition which held church tradition and papal authority in conjunction with the Bible. By maintaining that all of Christian doctrine and life should be grounded in the Scripture, Luther democratized religious knowledge, suggesting that every believer, irrespective of their status within the church hierarchy, had the right and responsibility to interpret the Bible. This stance not only provoked theological debates, but also encouraged the translation of the Bible into vernacular languages making it accessible to an extensive audience. Luther's own German translation of the New Testament in 1522 was revolutionary, promoting a culture of biblical literacy and piety among the laity that had been unprecedented in the history of Christianity. In addition, Luther's redefinition of the sacraments tried the very mechanisms through which the medieval church exercised its spiritual authority. Rejecting the Catholic Church's seven sacraments, Luther maintained that only baptism and the Eucharist had a clear biblical basis. His interpretation of the Eucharist, which he saw as a testimonial to Christ's presence and a means of grace, rather than a re-sacrifice of Christ or a bare symbolic act, ignited fierce debates with both Catholic and appearing Protestant theologians, notably with Zwingli during the Marburg Colloquy. These debates pointed out the diversity within the Reformation movement itself, reiterating the objections of enacting doctrinal consensus even among those who shared a common appraisal of the Catholic Church. Luther's theological postures did not arrive in a vacuum, but were part of comprehensive intellectual and religious currents that typified the Renaissance and early Reformation period. Humanist scholarship, with its insistence on returning ad fontes, or to the sources, influenced Luther's access to biblical studies, stimulating an integral involvement with the scriptures that based many of his theological acumens. Similarly, the growing sense of disenchantment with the church's corruption and the desire for a more authentic spiritual experience resounded with Luther's intensity on personal faith and piety. The debates that Luther's ideas sparked were not merely academic disputes, but were acutely intertwined with the political, economic, and social tensions of the time. Princes and city councils, motivated by a mix of spiritual conviction and political expediency, adopted or rejected Lutheran doctrines, leading to the fragmentation of Christendom, 
into competing religious and political entities. The Augsburg Confession and the Peace of Augsburg attempts to form a legal framework for religious coexistence within the Holy Roman Empire, chewed the lasting impact of Luther's theological innovations on European politics and society. Basically, Martin Luther's theological contributions represented a rich rethinking of Christian doctrine and practice. His priority on justification by faith, the authority of Scripture, and the redefinition of the sacraments challenged the medieval church's theological infrastructures, provoking a series of debates that would define the Protestant Reformation. These debates, however, surpassed theological concerns, cogitating the expansive cultural, intellectual, and political renewals of the early modern period. Luther's outcome, therefore, lies not only in his specific doctrinal stances, but in his role in catalyzing a movement that reshaped the religious, intellectual, and political scenery of the Western world. Further, the socio-political upheaval instigated by Martin Luther's theological protests to the Catholic Church was paralleled only by the serious metamorphosis in his personal life, both of which had far-reaching implications for the religious and cultural views of Europe. Luther's ideas did not remain confined to the theological arena. They permeated the socio-political fabric of the Holy Roman Empire, influencing princes, peasants, and clergy alike. The alignment of certain German princes with Luther's cause, ostensibly for religious reasons, also served their political interests, allowing them to repeat greater autonomy from the Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Emperor. This convergence of religious reform and political power dynamics fundamentally altered the political landscape of Europe, bringing for the decentralization of religious authority and the advancement of state churches. The Peasants' War, 1524-1525, a massive uprising that swept through the German states, was partly encouraged by Luther's calls for Christian freedom. However, the rebellion also had strong socioeconomic roots, as peasants sought relief from oppressive feudal obligations. Luther's response to the uprising showed the limits of his revolutionary zeal. His initial sympathy for the peasants' grievances quickly turned to condemnation as the rebellion escalated. Luther argued that social and political order was ordained by God, and he passionately opposed the violent upheaval, urging the princes to crush the rebellion. This stance, while preserving his relationship with the secular authorities, tarnished Luther's reputation among the common people and underlined the convoluted interplay between religious reform and social change. On a personal level, Luther's marriage to Katharina von Bora in 1525 illustrated a big shift from traditional clerical celibacy and set a precedent for Protestant clergy marriages. Katharina, a former nun, became not only Luther's wife but also his partner in a domestic enterprise that confronted existing norms about the roles of clergy and women in society. Their marriage was both a practical partnership and an intensely affectionate relationship, contributing a model of companionate marriage that would influence Protestant notions of family life. The Luther's home became a hub of intellectual, theological, and social exchange, embodying the principles of Christian community and hospitality. Their family life, with its gravity on education, piety, and charity, exemplified the ideals of the Protestant Reformation and afforded a new vision of Christian living. Besides, Luther's translation of the Bible into German democratized religious knowledge, enabling lay people to lock directly with the Scriptures. This act not only tested the Church's control over religious interpretation, but also supported a culture of literacy and pivotal contact with religious texts among the laity. The widespread availability of the Bible in the vernacular boosted personal piety and individual interpretation of Scripture, advancing to the diversification of religious beliefs and practices. Luther's relationship with secular authorities, distinguished by a pragmatic alliance with German princes, underscored the elaborate connections between religious reform and political force. While Luther benefited from the protection of sympathetic princes, such as Elector Frederick the Wise of Saxony, he also navigated the tests of aligning his reformist agenda with the political ambitions of his protectors. This alliance between Lutheranism and secular force aided the spread of Protestantism, but also led to conflicts and divisions within the Holy Roman Empire, culminating in the religious wars of the 16th and 17th centuries. To sum up, 
the socio-political dynamics unleashed by Martin Luther's theological innovations were as life-changing as his doctrinal confrontations to the Catholic Church. Luther's commitment with the socio-political issues of his time, from the Peasants' War to his relationships with secular authorities, uncovers the all-round impact of his reformist agenda. His personal life, specifically his marriage and family, represented the principles of the Reformation and displayed a new model of Christian living that echoed with many across Europe. Together, these aspects of Luther's life and work helped to a reconfiguration of the religious, social, and political murals of the early modern period, emphasizing the indelible mark Luther left on history. Last but not least, the upshot of Martin Luther is a drapery woven with threads of thorough theological innovation, ingrained controversies, and abiding influence that extends much more than the confines of the 16th century. While Luther is celebrated for catalyzing the Protestant Reformation, his life and teachings are not without their contentious aspects, which have prompted serious reassessment over the centuries. Among the most divisive of Luther's aftermaths are his later writings against the Jews, which have been interpreted by some as leading to a footprint of anti-Semitism within Christian thought. These writings, defined by vitriolic language and calls for harsh treatment of Jewish people, exist in blunt contrast to Luther's earlier calls for their conversion through kindness. This dark facet of Luther's product has been the subject of intense scrutiny, especially in the light of the horrors of the Holocaust, leading some modern theologians and historians to grapple with the connotations of Luther's words on subsequent generations. In addition to his controversial stances, Luther's offerings to Christian theology, notably his doctrines of justification by faith alone and the priesthood of all believers, have left an indelible indication on Christianity. These doctrines not only tested the theological and ecclesiastical structures of his day, but also democratized Christian faith, accentuating a direct personal relationship with God that bypassed the mediating role of the clergy. Luther's translation of the Bible into the vernacular further revolutionized access to Scripture, enabling laypeople to connect with the Word of God in their own language, advancing a culture of biblical literacy and piety that has persisted into the modern era. The socio-political repercussions of Luther's actions are equally consequential. By aligning himself with certain German princes, Luther inadvertently laid the groundwork for the rise of state churches and the gradual secularization of European politics. This perplexing interaction between religion and politics during the Reformation set the spotlight for the evolution of religious tolerance and the concept of the secular state, fundamental elements of the modern political scene. Modern perspectives on Luther vary widely, considering the sophisticated nature of his result. Some view him as a hero of faith and a champion of religious freedom, while others denunciate his failures to uphold the principles of tolerance and nonviolence. Contemporary scholarship tends to approach Luther with a subtle comprehension, recognizing both his transformational additions to Christian thought and practice and the less commendable aspects of his fruit. Luther's surviving influence is evident not only in the religious sphere, but also in the cultural and intellectual realms. His strength on education, principally his advocacy for the schooling of girls, strengthened the rise of literacy and the value placed on education in Protestant regions. Luther's hymns and his promotion of congregational singing enriched the Christian liturgical tradition, embedding his theological intuitions in the worship practices of millions. In recent years, the ecumenical movement has sought to bridge the divides that have long separated Protestants and Catholics, with leaders from both traditions acknowledging Luther's consequence while also seeking common ground. The commemoration of the 500th anniversary of the Reformation in 2017 asserted efforts towards reconciliation and mutual grasp, contemplating a desire to move further the controversies of the past. In essence, the legacy of Martin Luther is as varied as it is weighty. His theological innovations sparked a reformation that reshaped Christianity, while his writings and actions also sowed seeds of division and controversy. Modern perspectives on Luther recognize the ramification of his impact, grappling with the darker aspects of his effect while also celebrating his grants to the Christian faith. As scholarship continues to evolve, so too does the judgment of Luther's place in history, reminding us that the task of interpreting the past is an ongoing endeavor 
fraught with disputes but also abundant with opportunities for observation and growth. In conclusion, the Reformation, ignited by Martin Luther's 95 Theses, reverberates through the corridors of history, leaving an indelible mark on Christianity, culture, and society that extends well over its 16th century origins. Luther's audacious question to the Catholic Church not only fractured Christendom, but also catalyzed a series of theological, political, and social revolutions that have shaped the modern world. At the core of Luther's outcome is a profound reorientation of Christian thought, highlighting justification by faith, the authority of Scripture, and the priesthood of all believers. Principles that democratized religious belief and practice, enabling individuals to apply directly with their faith. Additionally, Luther's translation of the Bible into the vernacular and his backing for education laid the supports for increased literacy and intellectual engagement among the laity, backing a culture of significant inquiry and personal piety. Yet the Reformation's upshot is not without its entanglements and controversies, as evidenced by Luther's later writings and the turbulent socio-political upheavals that followed. The modern perspective on Luther is various, accepting both his metamorphic improvements and the darker aspects of his aftermath. Despite these complexities, the lasting echoes of the Reformation indicate Luther's strategic role in the history of Christianity and his lasting impact on the religious, cultural, and intellectual scenery of the Western world. In summation, Martin Luther's footprint, demonstrated by both groundbreaking innovations and contentious debates, continues to influence contemporary thought and practice as we deliberate on the abiding echoes of the Reformation. We are admonished of the energy of conviction, the significance of urgent involvement with tradition, and the ongoing quest for spiritual authenticity and reform in the ever-evolving dosser of Christian faith.